What do you say, gang? Got a box from my buddy Paul. Yes, that's right. The voice is not completely back. I am calling ear, nose, and throat specialist tomorrow. Uh, my buddy Paul. Buddy. <clears throat> Goodness sakes. My buddy Paul sent me a goodie box. Looks like a new old stock pull start for either a Tecumseh or a Clinton. That's just what it looks like. If you guys know, let me know. And package of USA made hot milk glue sticks. Can never have enough of those. I don't have much room around me to stack this stuff. This is peel and stick. All I have to do is heat this up a bit and all that will peel off. It's older, but it's uh, grip tape. So I may be replacing some of my Sunstar footrest original ribs with this because I have it. And it's 3M. <coughs> Excuse me. It is 3M. I had my voice yesterday. Here's another roll. And it's a big roll. Got some other stuff in here. This is a vintage voltage tester for AC and DC. That's pretty cool. I like these old things. This will get hung up. And I think it's a Square D. Yes, from Square D Company. Catalog number 5008. In its original leather holster. Neat, neat, neat. That's got some age on it. And if I have any caulking to do, I've got some silicone. Just a mix, mash of stuff. That's all that's in there. Now let's look at, see if I slow down, I can talk half decent. I don't know if I can get the coating, the wrapper off of this or not, but this is a chrome coil cover for like a six volt or 12 volt ignition coil. That's pretty neat. We're getting down there. And a new in the package bullet bottle opener. You can see there's no primer or anything there. Made out of aluminum, I think. Yep. It's pretty neat. Bottle opener. And sitting right next to it from Brad's is another bottle opener. I also got a hammer from Brad's, but <laughs> I forgot to grab it and bring it home. So when I go back out for the tow behind Swisher mower, I'll pick it up. And then two brand new straps 2.2 thousand pounds 4.4 thousand pounds nice big heavy straps I dig it big time it's also got the e-track so I can use these in the covered trailers we got a pair of them so that's everything thank you Paul very much for all of these goodies they are definitely appreciated and will get plenty of use. I'm just going to box it back up so that I can keep track of it until I am ready to put all of it in its place. Um, 
and I'm working on a couple of things today. Good night, this voice. <clears throat> Close that up in a minute. Working on a couple of things today. I've got the latest Sunstar in here and I pulled the clutch off. And sure enough, this clutch is toast. Wires have been stripped out and there were no mounting bits. So the whole thing was just spinning on its own. Um, I am going to hang on to it though because I may be able to use just this pulley set and replace this backside with an existing um, clutch that I have. Should be springs in those screw holes. So I have taken that off of the pretty sun star that's yet to be named. We'll call him Commander. How about that? So we have Sunny and we have the Commander. Um, everything's good here. This pulley's good and quiet. Those bearings are real quiet. Shaft has just slid right off. So um, this one, although it's good running, machine and ready to go more or less with the exception of the throttle um, the clutch is not going to be needed where it's going so I'm actually trading this one off for a tractor that I did own that's going to come back to me you guys ought to wait and see that but we're going to pop this clutch off got our wires here you guys aren't looking at our wires here um, and it's a real nice clutch it almost looks um, yeah it is a replacement so it's probably in exceptional shape I got a couple of new belts to put on over there but right now I'm gonna unbolt it we've got these long standoff bolts here this is the locating pin right here and looks like that's all I need is that locating pin and that'll hold everything together on the other one should be pretty easy to get off so let me get it off and then I will show you installing it over here on this side I already replaced the switch it's right here um, what happens with these clutches when they wear down it's an electromagnet <clears throat> so what happens is when it makes connection if it's not properly adjusted when you disconnect it it will rub on the copper winding epoxy until it wears through that epoxy once it wears through that epoxy, it heats up and oftentimes will melt your switch. Now gang, this is that Tecumseh HH100. This way. HH100. And just grabbed one of the two coils that I had, tossed it on, set the gap to the tall pin over here, and let's see if we have spark. Ready? I'm not sure if you guys saw that or not. We have spark. So I'm going to bolt this down to the table, get the head bolts back in. I'll go ahead and put the shroud back on too since I know we've got spark. I've got the kill connected right here. And don't get excited. No, my voice is not back. I have to pull it down a couple of octaves in order for me to have half a voice. And then I have to be it just barely above a whisper. But we're going to put some fuel 
in it, see if the fuel pump's good, and crank it over, see if we can get it to start. If so, we can stick this back in the wheel horse. Um, we had plenty of compression on this when we checked it some time back, and now that we know we've got a good coil on there, um, I don't know if the other one's good or not, but this one is throwing spark, so I'm stopping there. I'm happy enough with that. Uh, we'll see if we can't get her running. I'll clamp it down to the table. Just give me a second to get that all set up. Okay, what we wound up having was a toasted carburetor. Half the uh, main jet. This is the main jet from the carburetor that belongs on that tin horse. This is what it's supposed to look like. Again, comparative side by side here. See the bottom half's broke off. Because that bottom half is down in the bottom of there. So that's the end of that carburetor. So I jumped into the depths of carburetors and oddball stuff that I had in this orange tote. And would you know? Not one single Tecumseh carburetor, except for this itty bitty one in this box right here. It's a teeny tiny one. Then I had one over here, right here, but it's too small. So, I'm just going to order a new one. They're not very much. Um, but, I did check the fuel pump, and the fuel pump does work, as well as sprayed some starting fluid in with upper cylinder lubricant you read it that bottom line right there and it did fire over and run so it runs good enough now i'm going to get all this mess picked up and cleaned up i have just a few recoil cogs here <laughs> and some of them are new some of them are vintage, like this one. It's kind of strange. But I'm going to sort through this stuff. This is another carburetor that I thought would work, and then I got to looking at it, and it is off of a um, Chinese generator, so it will not work. Uh, let's say China, Japan. It might have been from a Honda or a Honda clone. But at any rate, I do not have a suitable carburetor here. So I'm just going to order one. And then I don't see why that engine can't just get tossed right back in the uh, um, wheel horse. Let's come around here. I can probably squirt just a little bit of starter fluid in there and it will pop over we'll see i'll try it ready of course everything on the table is going to go hell west bent and crooked i bet which will suck i'll pick it all up let's see if it'll pop well take my word for it you see here it spit a bunch of fuel out so the fuel pump is good I do have that shut off but we'll get a carburetor for this old boy and I thought that I didn't have the coil adjusted right and I was hitting the coil that's not what ha was happening this bolt right here was hitting the pins that trigger the coil so no damage to the coil still sparking doing everything it's supposed to do and this is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. You guys got a video out of me. In the beginning, you will have seen what's in that box over there. It does not match up with what I said I was going to work on next at all. That's because I lost all of that footage from the Hero 9 that I just picked up. So, I now have my trusty Hero 8 that I know does not lose footage. Had I known about the Hero 9's having 
such issues with dropping footage and whatnot, I would not have. Uh, well, I probably still would have bought everything because it was a big kit and everything will transfer over to the 10. So I guess I got to order a Hero 10 where they got rid of that glitch. It's a hardware, not a software issue. It's a hardware issue. So, and it's way out of warranty, so I can't get it fixed. But this is your friend, the neighborhood Zippo. Appreciate all you guys. We are going to get a video here next on the uh, Kizzy Vehicle Super Probe cam 50 and it does all kinds of really neat stuff so guys stay tuned for that i've got messes all over everywhere to clean up thanks to that silly little engine but anyway friendly neighborhood zippo promise you guys i will see you when i see you later i'm out of here